Pros on the Road is sponsored by Autolite, manufacturers of high-quality spark plugs since 1935. Visit Autolite.com for more information. Today we're heading to Turning Wrench's Garage in Louisville, Kentucky. They specialize in BMW, Mercedes, and Audi, a little bit with the Highline German automobile. We're going to see what they've got going on in their shop today. It even says European on the side. I like it. Maybe you would. Thank you, thank you. All right. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. How, are How are you? you? Great. Morning. 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 I'm Michael Brown. Joe Keen from hey, Joe. Pros on the Road. Nice Josh Trokey, nice to meet you. you. Pleasure. Beautiful Love entry here. I was going to say, much. this is very nice. I like it. Thank you. I like it. If I may, let me take you guys on back to the shop and introduce you to our owner. That'd awesome. Thank you. Come on back. Thank you. This is Levi Johnson, our owner. Levi. Hey, nice to meet you. Joe, nice to meet you. Joe, nice to nice finally to meet, meet you. Josh. Josh, nice to meet you. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, how's uh, everything going today? Wonderful. I like the shop. This is, I'm a European car guy myself, so seeing the cars here and how you got the shop set up, slick. I like it. <laughs> is that air conditioning I'm feeling? Yes. That's it great. Is. Yep. Sure, that uh, makes your text a little happy. Yes, it is a definitely benefit in the perk. Oh, absolutely! That is amazing. Nice clean floor, nice clean shop as well. Yeah. Can we get a tour? Yes, sir. Love to walk around. All right. So, go uh, uh, parts dispatching intake here. We got a oil furnace set up there for the winter time. Obviously, we don't need that in the summertime since the <laughs> air conditioning's on. Um, we got nine total lifts. Uh, Wow. Regular car lift, I would call them. We sure. got one 15,000 pound rack, as you can see, we use it for the sprinter vans. And then we have an alignment rack as well. So it brings us to a total of 11. Uh, and uh, for how many techs? Uh, right now we're running three plus myself, so four technically. So you're out, you're the owner and you're still wrenching? Yes, sir. Excellent. Yep. That's Great. Amazing. I mean, that's so unique. You don't hear that that often anymore. Yeah. Absolutely not. Most owners prefer to kind of run the day-to-day -day operations. and. And, and direct what things are needing to be done, but you've decided to stay kind of in both. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, I don't do 100% either one all the time. I'm kind of just Bouncing back out. and forth a little bit. Yes, sir. Seems to work all right though for but, you. I mean, I have a great team. I mean, they help me up front to support me and you know back me up. I got guys back here that back me up as well. So it's just kind of, it's working right now. Uh, you know, long-term growth, hopefully that's not the case, but it is for right now. Yeah, no, that's great. Here we have the alignment machine. Nice. So, I mean, you guys have the capability here to do pretty much anything and everything. Uh, as far as alignments go, yes. Uh, I mean, as far as the cars we work on, uh, level of capabilities, I would say we're probably 95% of what you would see at a dealership level. That's awesome. Um, there that are certain great. things that may be proprietary to, to them that, yep. that they're not gonna give us or it's just cost prohibitive to actually do those tasks. But right. I mean, we try to keep everything in house, like I said, up to 95%. I mean, that goes for alignments, OE scan tools and, and the like, so that we can do programming, coding, all that stuff here in house. That's great. Um, and again, do you find it, is it being a little bit of a niche market, it's Got to be a little bit more difficult, or is it easier for you? Um, both. I mean, there are things that are difficult, just the nature of the product line, and there are things that are easier because that's what we do. Yeah. You know, that's our that's our thing. That's so, your specialty. Right. So I, I mean, I just saw one of the techs took and had hose reel there. I mean, is that? It looks like I see air. Is there oil on that too? Absolutely. We do have the two grades of oil that we use the most, yeah. uh, I would say 90% of the time. Those are both overhead, the air's overhead, uh, just so it's more convenient and, you know, for Also oh, keeps a cleaner shop, you keep the things off the floor and not dragging things around. Exactly. Much easier that way. That's for awesome. For the techs. Where's your, uh, where's your bay? Uh, I work over here typically. Let's go take a look. I think this is uh, where I do most of the, my work is in this bay here. Um, and the reason why it's uh, set up this way for me is it is a single bay use for me, but then it allows my technicians to each have two bays a piece. Okay. So that way, oh, excellent, that, excellent. Again, back to efficiencies and, and, yeah. and the nature. Um, so I just stick to a single bay, not that I can't use more if I need it, but um, right. usually just de dedicate one single bay for myself. That's awesome. Great, that is great. What are you uh, working on on this one? 
This is a BMW in for a crank no start. Um, it was actually brought to us. It was at the dealer and they towed it over here instead. So we're uh, double checking it out and see what's going on uh, with it. So. No, no kidding. It, you know, it's it's rare to see the Beamers with a, you know, a no start with all the pro backup systems that they have on these cars to prevent these owners from not walking anywhere right. or getting the yeah. tow. So yeah. that's obviously a, gonna be a fun one. Yeah, it's been uh, a little bit challenging uh, so far. I mean, it was mentioned as a partial diagnosis from the dealer that may need an engine wiring harness. We've alleviated that and we're beyond that. It, it's not the engine harness is the failure. Um, it's got a couple other things going on that we're still working the bugs out sure. on. Sure, wow. You know, I'd love to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and kind of talk about your philosophy of your business and how you got started and sure. where you see the future going. Absolutely. That'd Let's be do great. It. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. Start your passion. Whether it has four wheels, two wheels, or no wheels. Whatever your passion, ignite it with Autolite. through trying to figure out what shops we want to go to there's a lot of things that go into it and Levi really stood out uh, being a very clean shop he had a lot of good pictures on the on the internet showing what his shop looked like and also a really good explanation of what they did not only that but they also had excellent ratings from their customers and some great testimonials so I thought getting his story out there and that kind of specialty niche that he does was worth exploring thanks for taking the time to sit down with me and talk a little bit you know most of the times we're in a lot of office settings because the owners typically like to be in the office more but since you're obviously owner and a technician I thought doing it out here would be great so really thanks for taking the time to meet with us today and and talk a little bit about your business no problem first thing I do want to know is tell us a little bit how you got started what made you want to get into doing your own business and again specializing in these more German vehicles uh, so I started from a tech school uh, range uh, I actually out of tech school I was recruited into what Mercedes has a, a program that's well at the time they called the elite program where they took graduates from tech school and then into their program and it was brand specific only uh, for six months program um, I did that in Rancho Cucamonga California um, lived out there for a while part of that deal was once you graduate you get your tuition reimbursed by the dealer that you go to work for um, I'm originally not from Louisville, but Louisville is one of the closer places to where I'm born and raised that would allow, you know, that has a dealership to work at. So uh, interviewed a couple dealerships in the area, uh, ended up liking the city of Louisville the best, uh, so, and struck a deal with the local Mercedes dealership uh, at that point, and that's when it all started. So what got you deciding, hey, I don't want to work for someone else, I want to be my own boss. How did that all evolve? Uh, it was mostly just, you know, at the dealership level, there's just some things you have no control of or you just, you can't do. Um, and it's bo bottom line for me, it's just about helping people. Uh, I just want to be able to help people and I can do, provide that help on my own terms at this point. Yeah. Uh, and that was kind of the driver for me to say, hey, I want to do it for my, on my own. What was the learning curve from going from, what was that learning curve like going from, uh, you know, getting that brand specific Mercedes Benz training and now uh, you've got a BMW sitting in your bay? Uh, it's, it's a lot of work on my part, not only just uh, experience, you know, opening your mind to be like, hey, I, I can work on a, a BMW, an Audi, a Mini Cooper, a Porsche, or whatever it is, because they are all European, they may not be all specific German or what have not, but at the same time, they still kind of have that same base root, uh, but they all kind of do things their own way. So it's just a little ad adapting and then also seeking training, you know, personal training and technical training outside of, you know, you have to go out and find that, that training wherever yeah. it is and, you know, be willing to learn and bring it on. And we're always, as tech, still constantly and consistently learning and updating our training and, and learning new techniques and everything else. And I'm sure you're doing the same thing here with your techs and yourself. Always, yeah. It's every day I feel like you, you're learning something. Um, I mean, as far as from a training standpoint, you know, there's a lot of online training stuff. But my philosophy is training is always worth it 
even if you only learn one thing from the training, even if it's just one thing, uh, whether it's that, that, you know, that Easter egg that you get from that one class that may open up a lot of other things for you in other aspects. Yeah. So have you been in this location and kind of started here or how did that get going for you? Uh, no, we're actually, I guess about a year and a half at this uh, facility. Uh, prior to that, I was seven years at a, another location, which was quite a bit smaller. Uh, it was an old 1960s two bay gas station, uh, probably shop space of 645 square feet, where this facility total with the office is 8,500 square feet. Uh, wow. So, a, you know, from two bays to 11 bays, essentially, um, has really, you know, kind of helped the, the growth. I mean, I guess my core philosophy is, you know, just treat people how you want to be treated. Um, and then from the car aspect, we really strive to give the big picture. It's not just, hey, my coolant light's on and we fix the coolant repair and then send you on your way. I mean, we do a complete digital vehicle inspection and give you a 360 degree view of your vehicle so you can make educated choices on, yeah, I just need the coolant repair, it's X dollars, but I also need this or this is on the horizon and that's gonna be X more dollars do I want to invest the total dollar amount or can we do it in bite-sized pieces like yeah we can do this coolant repair today because it's stopping you from getting down the road but you're going yeah. to need these bushings at some point maybe before even the next oil change so it's on the horizon so that way you know it's coming um, and not three weeks from now you you are like, oh well, there's a noise in my front end oh well now you need these bushings well if I known I need those bushings I wouldn't have fixed the coolant part and I would just uh, got rid of the car or or done something else um, yeah so that's I mean I don't know, kind of from the business side, I feel like that's what we try to provide. Yeah, the you're, you're right up front and you're honest about it um, and, and letting the customer uh, make that decision that you're helping them by being informing them and showing them what's going on so they don't feel like they're being taken advantage of. Well, and I, and I think too for me, it's, it's about letting you know what the car needs and educating you on why the car needs what it needs. It's your money or their money, it's their dollars. I mean, they spend it how they want. All I can do is advise you on why you would need what you need. And then, you know, if you have questions about that or need some education on why you need what you need, then, you know, we'll provide that to you and then you make the choice. It's your money, yeah. it's your car, you spend it how you want. And, and we're willing to work with customers on budgetary things. If it's like, hey, I know my car needs X dollar amount, but I only have this much to spend, what can we do today for that? To, make the car safe and reliable. I mean, that's, as the industry professionals for the automobiles, you know, we're the eyes and ears for you as a consumer yeah, on yeah. the vehicle. Um, and if we don't provide that information to you, I feel like we do a huge disservice to the customer. So if I was uh, perusing through the online ads of job openings as a technician and I ran across your uh, opening for a technician, what would you be looking for out of a tech that would you would want to bring in uh, into your shop? Uh, I think first and foremost for me, it is you know open-mindedness, um, willing you know to be open-minded, willing to learn. It's uh, to me, it's more about the character and the fit, not necessarily the skill and, and the training, um, because you know you could be have all the badges of honor as far as mechanics technicians go and and have a poor attitude and that doesn't really get anywhere I mean we're really a team um, you know it doesn't really it doesn't matter if Jeff's working on something and needs Josh's help or Chris is working on something and needs Jeff's help or they're all three working on something and they need my help if we can't all do it together then I mean there's really no sense in trying to do it what, what, what would you describe a successful day here I mean what are what are your goals that you go home and you're like everything went the way I wanted it to go. Describe that a little bit. Uh, I mean, I guess for me, I mean, it starts with my employees. You know, I want to make sure that they're happy. You know, everything is going, they have what they need. Um, and I mean, ultimately too, it's, I mean, customer satisfaction. I mean, I want to go home knowing that I help people. I help people with what they needed help with. Um, you know, I was able to meet their expectations as far as if they need their car done at a certain time or we were able to, you know, complete a, uh, a testing plan or something that you know maybe somebody else couldn't um, so yeah I mean it just I don't know as a business owner I don't think there's ever going to be a perfect day um, there's just days that may be not less hectic more so yeah, than other yeah. days um, but it's just you know it's uh, I think it's just making everything work I mean whether it's in the bay or at the front counter or you know that first, first phone call that someone 
you know, I mean, I would say 90% of the time someone's not calling the auto repair shop just because they're like, hey, what's happened? You guys doing all right over there? I mean, they, they, they actually need you for something, yes. you know, to yes. be there when they need you, to me, is kind of an honor to know that they would call you and be like, hey, guys, I, I have this issue pop up. How can you help me? You know, and I yeah. will be there to help them. Yeah. <clears throat> I always used to tell my students when I was an automotive instructor that, no customer wants to call an auto shop like you just said, because usually the wallet's going to be opened and something may be on a tow truck at that point. Um, and that's important things for young techs to understand that the customers are you know, valuable and you've got to make sure that you're assisting them because it is a stressful time when something's wrong with them because they're not really ecstatic to call you. I don't care how much they like you. Right, right. You know? I mean, and I think that's what we try to do here is make that as seamless as possible yes you're going to come visit us yes it's going to cost you money but it's it's not i mean we're not costing you money yeah. you know it's just the, the nature of the beast i mean it's it's a car and i feel like most consumers nowadays do not understand what a car is i mean a car is technically a machine you know but it is a machine in all aspects like it has its own hvaa system in it you know it's air heating and air system its own little thing you know most of them are driving computers uh, you know and it still has a, an a engine and it has a transmission and it has tires and brakes and you know there's there's a lot that goes on in automobile I think that the general public are oblivious to it's just put my key in I want to drive it I want to get from point A to point B and don't understand what's actually happening you know how many people that drive a car every day know that they have four this four spaces this big that keep their car on the road that's the tire patch. That's all they have. Yeah, you know, you're great driving point. an 8,000 pound vehicle or whatever it is, and you have four, you know, small patches of rubber that are holding you to the road. No, that's a great point. I like the way you look, you're looking at that. Did you have any issues or problems when you moved from that other shop to here? Did you lose customers, or did they kind of follow you, or are you getting a new kind of customer base? Or I'd say I had a little bit of both. I have some people that you know maybe don't want to make the drive. Others that um, don't care. You know, another thing I strive to do as a business is provide such a great service that it doesn't matter where I'm at. That's great. Like, you'll drive to the end, the end of the earth to come see us because that's the level of service that I want to provide. That's a fantastic way to look at it. Great. That's great. You know, I know Josh is, is anxious to talk to some of your techs and he wants to see a little bit more about how they're making things work around here. Uh, I do want to take the time to say thanks a lot for taking, just sitting down with me and getting to know the philosophy and what makes you work and, and knowing how you're kind of dealing with the current trends and where you're heading and everything like that. So I want to say thanks a lot. Absolutely, thank it's you. It's been a lot of fun, thanks. Thank you. So the one thing I really thought was really cool about Levi and the way he ran things is not just he's sitting behind a desk in an office somewhere, he's out there in the shop with the guys, uh, right in the trenches. Um, he's being proactive in his shop. He's helping the guys out. Um, he's working on the customer's car. So he's got a lot on his plate. Um, but I think it's as a tech, I really like seeing him in that shop. And I think the techs enjoy having him there. Start your passion. Whether it has four wheels, two wheels, or no wheels. Whatever your passion, ignite it with Autolite. I'm Josh. Doing? Josh. Nice to meet you. I'm Josh. Too. That's, that's going to be easy to, to remember. So, right. how long have you been here? Uh, since we moved in this facility is when I started. Okay. Uh, so, it'll be a year, uh, December of 19, I believe, is the correct okay. date. Okay, great. When we started in this facility. So, have you always worked on European cars or did you start someplace else? Or? Uh, yes, I've worked on cars since I was, uh, so 19 years. Okay. Okay. So, you've always been a Mercedes guy. Yes. Wow. So how has it been to adapt to BMW, Audi, some of the others? Um, it's a little different. You know, everybody likes what they like. You know, you used yeah. to work on one product, you know, but in the vast majority of things, they're all the same concept. Germans kind of, German cars all kind of yep. keep the same thing. Yep. It's a little different. You know, you got to soak up a lot of knowledge from different manufacturers and et cetera, and wiring diagrams and et cetera are different. So. Yeah. It's uh, definitely difficult to adapt, but it is adapting. So, was there someone that influenced you through the years on cars or mm. anything like that? 
I wouldn't say there's anyone in particular. My brother does work on cars. He's a couple years older than I am. Okay. And he works on German cars as well. He works okay. on Mercedes. So. So it's it's just. Yeah, we talk bloodline. a lot about cars. It's bloodline. Yes. So I've got I've got a big question for you on this because you are not a short guy. Um, when it comes to working on minis, the 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 first question is, do you like working on minis? They're okay. Okay. The other one that I got to say, when you've got to take a mini for a test drive, does it take you a while to put the car on? No, not too long. Okay, good, good. But it does get a little difficult at times. <laughs> but actually, believe it or not, Mini Coopers, for, you know, for just me getting in there, they're right. actually way roomier than most people think. Now, I can get in the back seat. No, no, so. that would take a running start. And some right, or something. exactly. Is there an area that you feel like you specialize in? Because there's guys that, I mean, mm. there's, there's engine guys, there's suspension guys, there's diagnostic guys. No, everywhere I've ever worked, we've all been, there's no been, there's never been, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours. Okay. So that way you end up with better, well-rounded technicians, in my opinion. Everybody does everything. You know, everybody has a little strong suit on certain things, yeah. but uh, no one part in particular. What drives you on a daily basis to, to come in and learn more? Well, that's the beauty of cars is like, there's always, it's never a dull moment is a good word. You know, something's always different. You know, cars are always changing. Yeah. And it's just nice to know that it's not gonna be the exact same thing. Like a factory work would be a good example. For sure. You know, you work in a factory. Most of the time you're kind of doing the same thing, flipping parts, putting parts, screwing yep. parts on. You know, we're at least working on cars. It's never the same. Might be the same kind of thing, but it's yep. never exactly the same. And there's days where later on, but not back to back to back that consecutive days. Sense. So that's kind of nice. You know, so every day's a mystery. Oh, that's, I love what you've done with your hair too. Yeah, that's, I know it's great. I've had it for about, you know, <laughs> gone for about 18 years. When I turned 22, I went bald. It was super amazing. <laughs> well, no, it just, it came out the bottom. No, it was there before that. So no, it just okay. disappeared. Okay. So if a technician's looking to get into the industry, what would be your advice for someone just starting out? Um, a young person, I would think my advice would be to stick with it and it'll come. But, you know, get any education you can regardless of if it's some kind of training from high school, vocational school, college, you know, but know where you want to go. You know, if you, there's diesel mechanics that work on heavy equipment or tractors or loaders right. or et cetera, or work in coal mines, you know, so that all depends on your location. Yeah. On the maps, in my opinion. Uh, but if that's what you want to do in your passion, you can do it and be successful as long as you try. What makes this shop unique? Well, the uniqueness of this shop is the homeliness, I guess is a word. You know, okay. like you're not a number, you're a person. Okay. You, know, you see the owner on a daily basis. You talk to everybody that works here multiple times throughout the day. You know, it's like a family. That's great. So it's not. Number 32 technician. Right. You know, come and do your job, leave. You know, everybody cares about everybody past just work. That's great. You know, on a personal level. So that makes it feel more intimate, maybe is a good word. That's, yeah, I'll take that one. That is the goal. I want to thank you for spending the time with me today. I'll let you get back to work. And uh, once again, thanks a bunch. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Start your passion. Whether it has four wheels, two wheels, or no wheels. Whatever your passion, ignite it with Autolite. Hey, I really want to thank you for t spending the time with us today. I mean, you've got a very cool shop. I mean, the stuff that you work on, I, I get why you guys specialize on it. And obviously, you've uh, really done well with that, Meech. So thank you very much for uh, spending the time with Thanks us Thanks for today. coming. It was great. Really great to talk to you. Appreciate I'm really it. impressed with the shop. I think you've done a great job with it. And obviously, just moving in the past year, uh, I wish you nothing but the best for continued success and growth. And uh, it was really wonderful opportunity to come in and talk to you about it. So. Appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, thank thanks. You Take right. care. You too. That, uh, good shot.
Yeah. Nice and clean. Oh my word, yes. I mean, what a dream to work in a clean, air conditioned air -conditioned shop. shop. <laughs> oh <laughs> my totally. word. Oh. That, uh, I mean, and I know it gets hot down here. But that, to me, just makes all the difference in the world if you can be that much more comfortable.